Hello everyone, Nougat here. Um, so I have recently got into um, modding uh, Nerf guns. My um, some of my coworkers are uh, are very much into them. Uh, I used to play with them when uh, when I was a little kid, and um, yeah, I guess I I didn't realize they could be you know beefed up and whatnot to make them more fun for adults. So. Uh, yeah, now I've gotten into messing with them. Um, so right now, my main project is the, uh, this guy, the N-Strike Elite Mega Centurion. Uh, now, the big problem with this thing is it has a sealed reverse tube. Uh, what that means is... Um, so the caulking mechanism, the, uh, you've got the charging handle there. Uh, it's actually two halves. There's one on the other side of this, uh, pulls the, the mechanism back. Um, there's, you know, it's all gear driven and everything. And, uh, it pulls the handle forward here or the, uh, the, sorry, the tube pulls the tube forward and then, uh, locks the little piece on this guy up here and uh, that's what locks it in place it pushes the uh, the dart chamber up towards I think it puts it about uh, let's see I think it puts it about that far in you know just barely um, so there's enough to get it up into the barrel and then uh, when it fires uh, what's going on here is, so this is, there's a spring inside, and it's actually between the end of the plunger tube and, uh, or the end of the plunger and the top of the plunger tube. Um, whereas, you know, with a lot of other Nerf guns, it's, uh, you know, you pull it back and the spring is behind the plunger and throws a plunger forward. This actually plunges the air down into the tube and up through the center of the um, the chamber there, uh, through the center of the, the actual plunger itself. You can't actually see through there, but it's about that size. There's a, there's a hole in the middle, and it runs along the entirety of the plunger. Now, uh, that forces air up through the, uh, up through the chamber and launches the round um out of the uh you know out of the gun and then it resets it back to uh way back here um so there are a couple problems well first of all yeah of course there's the uh the sealed tube we can't get in there and uh the best i could do was take a small small flathead um and I guess uh, maybe a Q-tip would have worked, but you know, not not that well. Uh, but it's got these uh, these vent holes here, uh, from there to there, and then from there to there. You can barely see them in the in the video here. If I turn the light a little bit, you can see them a bit better. But yeah, those are uh, those are just vent holes, just these big gaping holes here. So I've gone and uh, I I stuck a small uh, flathead screwdriver down in there with some uh, silicone grease on the tip and kind of ran it around the uh, the end of the plunger. Um, it looks like the ring is pretty loose in there, just like uh, a lot of other guns. Uh, for instance, this beast over here, uh, this is a... Oh, this is a mega missile. Um, so this thing would fire, oh, about five to ten feet and kind of fall off. Now I've got a good uh, 50, 60 feet on it. And, uh, yeah, it, it does a pretty good job now. Um, so the problem with that was the, uh, the O-ring around the plunger was extremely loose. Like, uh, proportionately, let's say my finger is the plunger tube. Um if it didn't have the lips to retain it, 
uh, it had it had like these little uh, these raised lips on each side of the um, the O ring. So if I had a ring on my finger and I turned my finger upside down, it would fall off. Um, that's about how loose the O ring was in there. So what I did was I took uh, just a little uh, plumber's Teflon tape. Ran it around in between those two little raised lips, uh, just down inside the recess where the uh, the ring goes, and then I used uh, some of this stuff, uh, just plumber's uh, silicone grease. Uh, just run that down in there around the the outside of the the O ring, and then run the ring up and down, or run the uh, I put the ring back on. Uh, put the grease on there and then ran the the plunger up and down the tube a few times to make sure it lubricated the whole thing real well you know greased up the ring again just to make sure it was good uh, you want to you only want to put a thin layer on there you know you don't want to goop it up and because uh, that'll just slow things down um, that'll do the opposite of what you're wanting to do with the silicone grease uh, but anyway that and uh you know, just tightening up the ring really added a lot of power to this thing. Like, it'll throw as hard as I pull the plunger. See, uh, let's put this on here. And we'll kind of aim that out there. Oh, come on, turn. Oh, it's because I'm, there we go. All right, pardon the mess, guys. I'm, uh, in the middle of rearranging and cleaning some stuff up. So, oh. so that's the the uh, plunger handle. Uh, it does offer up some resistance as you pull it forward because it's uh, now it's really well sealed, so it's having to suck air through a, a sealed tube. Uh, so now if I launch it. Let's see if I can. Let's get good aim there and. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I'll try with the other hand. Okay. Aim and... Yeah. Before, it wouldn't do that. It'd make it to... Uh, you see that bookshelf right out there? It would uh, fall short of the bookshelf. <laughs> but now, you, you know, you see what kind of power it, does, it has. I didn't really put everything into it just now. So... No, it can do more than that. Um, now this, uh, back to the Mega um, Sniper here, the Centurion. Uh, so again, the ring inside there looks a little loose. So I'm going to see if there's a company out there. Um, like there are a lot of companies that make springs that are, you know, the right specifications for the, the Nerf guns. Um they make whole kits, uh, you know, new plungers and uh, tubes and everything. Uh, so I'm going to see if one, if there's one out there, um, if there's a, a tube that's not sealed up like this uh, that I can uh, get a hold of and uh, see if I can work with that. But until then, I've uh, sealed off those vent holes with electrical tape. Uh, like I said, I put some, uh, some of that silicone grease down in there with a screwdriver and then uh, you see these three screws here. Um, if you pull those three screws, uh, well, first you have to pull that monstrosity of a pile of screws out to separate the two halves. Uh, but then uh, you pull those three screws off the tube and um, underneath, uh, inside of that tube is... This little guy, you, uh, if any of you guys out there are modders, you'll recognize this as an air restrictor. Uh, so what this does is um, it'll rest up against the um, inside of the tube here, uh, you know, right up against there, uh, until a dart's put in. And the dart will actually push down on these tines, opening up the tube. Uh, so that air can escape and propel the dart. Now, the, uh, I mean, that it provides an air cushion and everything to protect the uh, the plunger, but 
uh, in this case, we actually have protection for the plunger. These are little, uh, see, those are nice soft foam uh, rings there. Or uh, maybe they're rubber. No, those are rubber, okay. And they're on these, uh, uh, they're in these little holes here, so they're well secured. And those actually provide, uh, there we go. Those provide protection to the tube. Yeah, if I have it lined up, it's normally lined up fine. It's just got this little stopper thing that uh, keeps it in place. Actually, let's, here. There, you can kind of see how that sits. So that's in there pretty well. Um, and that stops the tube from uh, you know, smashing too hard. And this is actually supposed to um, recess. Where is it? Oh, I guess it doesn't recess actually. But yeah, it won't. Uh, it won't go beyond that point. Um, right there. Those help to stop it from causing damage. So we don't really need the air restrictor in there to provide an air cushion so much because we've got protection for it. It's not going to smash itself to bits. Um, so I removed the air restrictor. Uh, so one of the big things about air restrictors though is that you know, as soon as the uh, dart is pushed past this point here, you know, it closes up like that. That's not much travel. It's about a about an inch of travel there. Um, and uh, yeah, when you when you have a large volume of air back here, trying to push through just that tiny little bit, <laughs> um, I think that's why the uh, vent holes are there to release the excess after that closes up. Uh, you get a lot of fall off. You don't, um, you don't get the full potential power of the plunger behind the dart. So removing the air restrictor should, um, provide a, a lot more power. I'm going to do the same thing with, uh, with that guy there. The, the big, ugh, this guy, the Megalodon. Um, it has an air restrictor down in there, uh, but I suspect in this case, I'm probably going to have to add some padding at the uh, top end of the tube, uh, like a rubber ring or something like that, just to protect the plunger. Because uh, some of these really slam hard into the, the end of the, the plunger tube if you don't have some sort of protection there. Uh, so I'm going to put a, like a little O-ring or something in, I'll, uh, just glue it in and that should be enough. Um, but yeah, in this case, we're good. We've got the, the protection there. So pull the, uh, the air restrictor, uh, seal off the vent holes after, you know, doing my best to lubricate with the silicone grease and we'll see how it goes. I'll, uh, post a video later and, um... I guess I should have posted it before, but I'll post the after. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is Nougat signing off.